Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. It's definitely about time for another devlog on my indie game. So it's been a while, but as I've stated in my previous video, the reason for that is that I've started working full time at an indie game studio and basically creating another brand new game from scratch there. But I'm still pretty happy with my progress over the last few weeks on my own project. So let's see what happened. Let's continue the tradition and start with a new area in the game. The new area, Granite Base Camp, is another village technically, although a very small one. And it's home to the people of the Granite tribe, which I've introduced last time. The village is very high up on the mountain and it features several points of interest for the story. I've also added a ropeway station, which connects the village to Elbeville, which is the mining village I've shown last time. And generally, I've invested quite a bit of time in improving level design, in a sense that the world gets more and more connections. I find this an essential element of any good open world map. I finally made the switch from orthographic to perspective camera. So basically, these two are different ways of projecting a 3D environment on a 2D screen. And since in Unity everything is technically 3D, it also applies to 2D games. Perspective projection is the default way for 3D graphics and is essential to achieve the realistic depth effect that distant objects appear smaller than close ones. In orthographic projection, on the other hand, all objects appear in their original size independent of their depth or position on the seaplane in case of 2D games. Traditionally, 2D games used orthographic projection because for 2D graphics it didn't make much sense to have 3D perspective effects. Also, it's easier to control the scrolling speed of background and foreground objects, for instance. In traditional 2D games, the background hills, for instance, were not actually distant objects, but just multiple planes of sprites layered on top of each other, and parallax scrolling was achieved by actually moving the sprites at different speed in code. Now, since Unity treats 2D sprites like 3D objects, we can actually use the advantages of 3D perspective projection in 2D games as well. And that way we get parallax effects in background and foreground out of the box and don't have to worry about getting scrolling speeds right. So the tile map, all interactable objects, characters, enemies and so on are on the same plane, which is C position of zero while decoration objects have a C position less or greater than zero, depending on how far in the distance or how near to the camera they should appear. Switching to perspective camera made several things a lot easier, but there were still some issues when it comes to background of my world. The thing with backgrounds is that they definitely shouldn't stand out too much, otherwise it will be really distracting for the player and hard to distinguish foreground and interactable objects uh, with the background. On the other hand, they still add a lot to the atmosphere, so they must be designed wisely. One major issue for my background in my game uh, is the vertical nature of my world, the mountain. So when you think of classic side-scrollers, the background often consists of multiple layers of hills, for instance, scrolling in a nice parallax effect. And this works well if the player is moving mostly horizontally. Problem is that in an open world like the one in my game, the player moves equally in all directions. And many metroidvanias are located in an underground world, which is generally easier to visualize, while in my case most of the areas are outdoor areas with mountain massives in the background. In the end, I decided to create multiple layers of background mountains and put them very, very far in the distance relative to the foreground. As you can see here in Unity, the backgrounds have a huge offset in the C direction. That way it behaves more like a mountain view in the real world, where the objects are actually very far away and therefore barely or only very slowly change as you move around locally. Over the past weeks I also added a few smaller mechanics for player movement, one of which is the dash, basically a quick roll move that can be used to dodge enemy attacks. Contrary to many other dash moves in 2D platformers, this one works only while the player is on the ground, and this was in line with my goal to avoid completely unrealistic player skills. Another skill which seems to work well with the mountain theme was a parachute. 
The parachute lowers the player's gravity so the player can glide and soften huge falls which would otherwise result in death. The parachute will be a very late game item since it changes movement pretty drastically by eliminating falling damage which generally is a central part of my game. I thought it's a good idea to give the player a way to descend the mountain quickly and while you could use the ropeways for that it's certainly cooler to base jump your way down. As I'm getting closer to finishing the game, I kind of want to be a little more selective on what I'm showing in the devlogs, since I don't want to spoil the entire game, but I hope you still got a good sense of what's going on. I think I will follow up with another devlog very soon, since I still got plenty of new stuff to show. I also, I'm also currently setting up the Steam page for Summit, and I'm almost done with that as well, so definitely stay tuned. That having said, have fun creating and see you next time.